Hello, this is the Greater Lagos Vision and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedoku. In fulfillment of his promise, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu commissioned a state-of-the-art mini stadium and a computerized youth center in Ikorodu area of the state. The youth center project is aimed at providing or producing a conducive environment for sporting and vocational needs of youths in Ikorodu. According to the governor, it is also to address the growing social vices among young people. The governor hinted about more youth centers at various stages of completion across the state, including Badagri, Orila Agege, Isheri, Ekbe, and Ikeja. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. Welcome once again. This episode features Lagos sets to commence construction work on Badagri Deep Seaport in June this year. Lagos pays compensation to residents affected by the construction of Igbobo Road. These and many more when we return. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu says the construction of the Badagri Deep Sea Port is set to commence in June as soon as the state is granted ratification by the federal government. The governor stated this during a stakeholders meeting and community engagement on Badagri Deep Sea Port project held in Topo Badagri. It is a community engagement of the people of Badagri with Governor Babajide Sawunlu. The reasons are not far-fetched. It is to deliberate on the delayed takeoff of the Badagri Sea ports. The idea of the Badagri Sea port was bettered 10 years ago by the former Governor of Lagos State, now the Minister of Works and Infrastructure, Raji Fashola. After a decade of delay, the project is about to see the light of day. Governor Babajide Somolu strongly believes that the project, when fully operational, will not only boost the fortunes of the people of Badagri, but also transform the entire economy of Lagos State and that of the entire West African sub-region. The Badagri Deep Sea Port project is not just one project. This is a multi-level opportunity for progress for all of the people in this part of our great state. And the volume of the trade and quantum of investment opportunity that it will spring up in this area when this project commences and when it is completed and when it becomes operational. Very importantly, employment and capacity building for the teeming youth and the women in this great community will remain a priority for this project. He assures the people of his administration's determination to push development to the Badagri axis of Lagos State. Residents who lost their homes and lands to the construction will not be overlooked. We know for certain that a project of this nature and magnitude will require a lot of sacrifice on the part of the people and the affected community. I wish to assure you that we're ready and willing to adequately compensate you for your economic losses and to replace all of your lost assets. Ensuring a smooth and cordial relationship between investors, Badagri Deep Seaport Limited, and members of the host communities is the next focus for the government. I appreciate the leadership of the host communities for their cooperation with the promoters of the Deep Seaport project and for allowing peace to reign in the various communities. Undoubtedly, the ultimate winners of this gigantic project are the host communities themselves. The deep seaport is to be located in Gwerefu area of Badagri, Lagos State. It covers an area of approximately 1,103 hectares, out of which 623 is dedicated to port activities. <laughs> Over 500 million naira had been paid as compensation to residents and families whose property were affected in the construction of Bola Akmenchinubu Igbogbo Road in Ikorodu local government area of Lagos State. 
Governor Babajide Sowolu handed over the checks worth 5 million naira to 20 beneficiaries when he paid a working visit to the area. A huge crowd waiting to welcome Governor Sowolu and his entourage to the venue. Soon, the atmosphere became electrified as the governor arrives. Sawunlu used the working visit to interact with the people and further reaffirmed his commitment towards making more of government presence felt in the area. I was at Odogion, the industrial estate, to commission and to hand over the big uh, Kimberly Clark factory. And on that road, we saw that we needed to fix that Odogion road that burst out onto the express and we're ready to do it. He also used the opportunity to commission the Kurudu Youth Center with the hope that this will reduce social vices and take the use of the streets. Everything we're about is about ensuring that we can take our citizens out of the poverty line. We can produce and engage our youth. We can create for them job opportunity. Chairman of the Kurudu local government, Wasiu Adeshina, on behalf of the people, thanked Governor Sawunlu for embarking on developmental projects in the division. I have no doubt stating that your administration has transformed Lagos into economic hub of Nigeria. On the realization of dividend of democracy, your leadership has brought immense progress, not only to Ikorodu, but to Lagos State at large. He told the governor that they are working with stakeholders, security agencies and state agencies on the security architecture of Ikorodu Division to boost the governor's efforts at attaining a crime-free state. The wife of the Lagos State Governor, Dr. Ibijoke Sawunlu, has decried the rejection of the gender bills by the House of Representatives. She described it as a discrimination against Nigerian women. She spoke during a One Million Women March Against Gender Discrimination. She called on the National Assembly to promptly reconsider the bills and approve them. So sing a song for women this rally saw the women from different walks of life marching from Lagos State Secretariat to the House of Assembly in Alausa, Ikeja. It was put together as part of activities to commemorate the 2022 International Women's Day. The theme was Break the Bias, Gender Equality Today for a Sustainable Tomorrow. They want immediate passage of all gender bills in the house. Women from all spheres of life standing for their rights, not happy with the rejection of what was passed at the National Assembly on the 1st of March 2022. Dr. Ibijo Kessa Wolo maintained that there can be no development without the full and equal participation of women in all spheres. The men including the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Mudashiru Obasa, were in consonance with the women in their crusade. When you empower a woman, you empower the whole nation. So we will always appreciate women in Lagos, in Nigeria and Africa for the good job you have been doing. You are the source of our family. You are the strength of the men. Dr. Sawunlu also spoke on the death of Ms. Uluwaba Mishi, who went missing after boarding a BRT bus and was later found dead. She described the development as sad, shocking and devastating. This is a big slap on our face. Lagos State is not known for ritual killers. And we will not tolerate such. And from now on, BRT buses will have fixed cameras all over to monitor closely. The Lagos State Government is set to launch a new resident identification card with improved features. 
According to the general manager of Lagos State Residence Registration Agency, Lastra, Dr. Ibilola Kasumu, the new card will allow users board a ride, make purchases, apply for loans, among others. I had a one-on-one -on -one interview with the general manager of Lastra, Dr. Ibilola Kasumu, for more insights. This is the Greater Lagos Vision, and what we'll meet today on this episode is the General Manager of Lagos State Resident Registration Agency, Lazra, Engineer Ibilola Kashimu. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Good to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Now, let's take off with um, the new resident identification card. Uh, why do you think I should come forward to have it done? Why, why is the need for it? Thank you very much. So the new Lagos State Residence um, um, card, ID card, is going to be a smart card. And what it does, it's, it, it uniquely identifies every resident of the state. And why we, we're doing this in Lagos State is so that we can plan adequately. So we take your demographic um, data, that's taking all your bio data, your name, um, gender, and um, just identify you and give you a unique identification. And then with that, we can plan resources, how we um, deploy infrastructure in different areas of the state. So that's basically what it is. Then also, it's not just about planning. Um, social benefits, welfare benefits, packages that we want to offer the state, um, discounts for certain um, identified residents. This will be easier done if we can identify you with this unique identification number. So that's really what this is all about. Like those of us who have had it done in the past, like I have done it, you know, uh, what do I need to do? How do I key into this uh, new uh, process? So by simply visiting our um, website, which is www.lagosresidents.gov.ng, it's, th it's um, very clear. There's a validation portal where you can go to, and once you click on the validation portal, it gives, there's a guideline on how you can update your records. So what we want is for proof of life, we need to know that you're still in existence, one. Number two, you need to update your records because certain information may have changed about you. You may have been single when you registered and now you're married. You need to let us know that and update the records. Your address may have changed. So many information about you may have changed, which you need to update before we go ahead to print the new cards. So that the um, portal is self-explanatory, how you need to go about it. Even if you don't have your, cur your current number, that there's a way which you can retrieve your number in order to update your records. But the most important thing is that you must have the original phone number which you registered with because there will be a one-time password, an OTP sent to that number. This is just to validate and confirm that you are still the holder of that number and you own the information you want to change. So what happened if, for instance, I used a particular number then you know, to, to register? and I no longer use that number, it's been reallocated to another person. So how do I go about it? That won't, you won't be able to do that on the portal. You will need to visit the head office or any of our offices in order for you to do that. Because the reason why you need to do that is because we need to validate and verify your identity. And the only way we can um, verify your identity, that you are the owner of the information you want to update, is by um, taking your biometrics at that time. So you would use your fingerprint to validate your identity. Then you would now provide us with the new information which we would update ourselves. Tell us about some of the unique features that uh, this new card possesses. So the new card is a smart card. It's a smart identity card. It's not just a plastic um, identity card. So what, what we mean by that it's a smart identity card is it has a chip on it. So it has um, 28 applets. The first applet, which is like combining, when I say an applet, you're combining 28 cards into one. You're compressing it into one card. Now, 
it has 28 different features and use cases that can be put on the card. So the first use case is a payment card. So it comes with an EMV um, payment module, which is a bank account and all. So it can be used like a, for a payment. You mean you can take it out and use it like a normal ATM card or a POS point to make payments? That's yes. Payment card. card. Yes. Because really it comes with a bank account. So there's, uh, we're, we're, we're working with the financial institutions as well. So each card comes with a bank account, which has payment capabilities. So you can withdraw at any ATM of any bank, use it on the web as well to make um, purchases on the web. That's one. Then the second applet is an ID applet where we've stored your basic information that that will confirm and it would probably deter people from trying to duplicate the card because the information written on the card must match what is on the chip as well. So you have certain information there. And then for emergency purposes as well, we have your next of kin as well on the chip so that for medical issues or any um, security issues, somebody, you know, they can get to that information once they have that um, ability. And then the third applet that, the, that is configured right now is a transport applet. So the same way the new carry card that Lagos State is using now on our bus um, public transport system, the same card will be acceptable. So the Lagos State resident card will be acceptable on the transport system, so on the BRT buses, on the Lagos ferry, and then when the rail starts as well, the card will be acceptable. I mean, and it's also, it also eases your access to government services. So right now we're speaking with other government agencies, like the Lagos State Health Insurance Scheme as well, that would have an applet on board. The pensioners would have their unique identification as well. So it helps the government to identify people that um, deserve or require benefits, certain benefits. So if you are um, identified as a vulnerable person living in Lagos and there are certain benefits that should come to you, it's easy because we already have your identification um, number. It's unique and it's yours till death and all. So that helps us to plan. It helps us to um, find out um, the demographics of certain areas so we know how many primary health care centers are required in certain areas. We know from the demographic data that we get, we will know how many infants were born in that area and do we have adequate provision for primary health care, for primary schools, for secondary schools, you know, certain infrastructure and social benefits, welfare you know, packages. These things are easily deployable when we know the um, demographics of a certain location. Right, you projected that not less than six million residents would have been enrolled or gotten this new uh, registration card by the end of 2022. Tell us, what are the measures you have in place or how do you intend achieving this? Okay, so currently in the database now, we have over four million records. Um, out of the four million records, um, one point, about just over one million are already validated, as in they're ready to go to print as we speak. Then we have about just over 3 million that are subject to validation. So these are people that have registered in the past that we expect them to go to the portal just for proof of life, so that we don't just print cards that will never be collected. Then we're aggressively also um, at registering residents right now. So we have offices or we have presence in each of the local governments and um, LCDAs so that people can go in there to go and register. And then we're also engaging independent um, partners where they are enrollment partners um, with LASRA and they go into the communities to register as well. So this, um, with advocacy, we expect that Nigerians would come out to come and register and we build the database from there. So that's the plan. Yes, so we, we just started our advocacy program um, where we've, um, we're going to embark on stakeholders' involvement or, or stakeholders' meetings in all 
the five divisions of Lagos State. So right now we're going around engaging the community leaders and people in the, the local government chairmen and all so that they buy into this before we now proceed with the stakeholders engagement and then the official launch. And once the official launch takes off, that kicks off the main advocacy program. But this is ongoing and this is part of it, what we're doing here now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know I'm not totally wrong here, but correct me if I am. Uh, approval for this was given sometime in 2019, uh, to be specific, in December. Why is it just taking off now? So, the approval process, I mean, commenced really or was given December 2019. So, implementation really started, or when we started executing planning, strategizing and all, in January. Um, so what looks like a delay was actually development, developmental progress, where this is the first of its kind that has ever been done. And there's quite a lot of development work that goes into it, where you're creating, you're kind of condensing 28 cards into one, so that this becomes your one card that you need to function in Lagos State. So it's not, that it's not planned, or it wasn't planned as such, but a lot of development has been going on in the background, and we just wanted to get it right. And then also because of the interruption due to the COVID-19 um, um, pandemic, that, that created a little bit of a delay in enrollment, but it didn't stop the strategic planning and development because you know you, you actually need interaction with the citizens where they need to come to physically touch things and the proximity can't be the distance when they're enrolling. So we had to halt enrollment for a little while, but it didn't stop progress ongoing, the, the progressive um, development. Now, let, let's try to just oppose it you know, side by side with a vision of Mr. Governor, which you and I, we, we, we are aware of the uh, Greater Lagos of Vision, making Lagos a smart city, and also the themes agenda. How does this, you know, impact on that vision? So this helps because every citizen or every resident of the state is uniquely identified. When you're uniquely identifiable, it makes it easier for us to deploy certain benefits and um, to plan accordingly. Also, I mean, we're, we're trying to make it um, as easy as possible for people to reside in Lagos. So if it's the same card that I require to get on a bus, same card I require to get on a ferry, same card is required to get on the train when they do start, same card is required at the health um, facility that I'm going to seek treatment, same card is required when I attend certain schools, um, public schools in Lagos State, then it just makes it easy. You don't need to keep on going back and forth to enroll and be issued a different card. So that's part of it, making Lagos a smart city. Enrollment is free. Enrollment is totally free. But residents are expected, just like when you collect your um, ATM cards from banks, because it comes with a bank account, you're expected to activate the card with the 1,000 Naira. That 1,000 Naira goes on the um, card as credit. So it goes in your bank account as credit to you. It's, money, it's your money to be spent. But 1,000 Naira is required to activate the card. That's all we have for you in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Love Ikuku Oyedoku. Bye for now. <laughs>